Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, we will be speaking about what is known as epigenetics today. Before we start on into the topic, let me give a small introduction about what is basically epigenetics. Epigenetics was introduced by Waddington, the coin was termed by Waddington, which in which he tried to explain what is basically the study of casual mechanisms by which the genes of the genotype bring about the phenotypic effect. But today now the definition has changed into it is a study of change in the gene function that is meiotically or mitotically heritable and do not entail a change in the sequence of the DNA. That means there is no change in the sequence of the DNA, but it effectively alters how the three dimensional structure of a DNA is there. Now, the DNA genetic information is basically contained within the 23 chromosomal pairs that contains approximately 25,000 genes. Now, let us have a small introduction about how is the arrangement structure before we move on to the what are the epigenetic changes. Now, in this picture we can see that there is a double stranded DNA which gets coiled into different types in order to give the final chromosomal structure. Now, the DNA total length of the DNA is 2 meters, but in order to fit inside a cell within a chromosome, it has to be compacted about 10,000 folds. The compactation generally happens by having a micromolecular or a macromolecular assembly in which the DNA is associated with a protein to form a structure that is known as nucleosome. Now, nucleosome is a basic model and nucleosome is generally built up into a beaded like structure that gives it a necklace like appearance. Now, in this picture we can see that the DNA is basically wrapped around spools of proteins. The proteins are known as histone proteins. Now, this beaded arrangement is what basically is the nucleosome model. Now, coming on to the general structure of histones, which is very, very important to know about the epigenetic changes and how are epigenetic changes brought about. Now, we saw in the last diagram, we saw the beaded appearance. The beaded appearance is nothing but the nucleosome model in which we have a central protein core around which the DNA is wound about. The central protein core is known as the histone core, which is an octamer made up of four histone proteins, which are H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. This octamer basically forms the nucleosome core with 147 nucleotides of DNA wrapped around it that forms approximately 1.75 turns. Now, this histones are nothing but made up of amino acids. The individual amino acid number being H2A is made up of approximately 130 amino acids, H2B is made up of approximately 126 amino acids, H3 135 and H4 is variable that is having 102 to 135 amino acids. But the key feature is approximately 20 to 25 percent of the total amino acids that are present in this histones are nothing but lysine and arginine that is they are basic amino acids they have an extra positive charge. Now, next we see how is basically the structure is maintained. What are the factors that stabilize the nucleosome model? Now, the histones are made up of basic amino acids such as arginine and lysine which have a positive charge. This positive charge interacts with the negatively charged phosphate backbone of the DNA and this charge helps to keep the DNA tightly wound around the histone octamer. In addition to that, there are few other interactions that also help to maintain the nucleosome structure. The other interactions are hydrogen bonds that happen between the DNA backbone and the amide groups of the proteins or the amino acids that are present on the histones. In addition to that, there are nonpolar interactions that happens between histones and the deoxyribose sugars that are present on the DNA and there are salt bridges and hydrogen bond interactions that happen between lysine and arginine with the oxygen that is present on the phosphate group. Whatever be the interactions, the basic idea is DNA is wrapped around the histone octamer with the help of all the four interactions. So, each interaction has its own important role in maintaining the nucleosome structure. Now, coming to a 
<coughs> picture that shows the nucleosome model. Now, in this picture, we can see the chromosomal beaded appearance starting from the beginning in the picture and then as we expand it, we see each bead in a greater detail and the DNA wrapped around it. In the next picture, we see a closer overview of a single nucleosome wherein you have the histone octamer and we can see the DNA wrapped around it. Now, in the, in the second picture, we see there are the four histones that are there H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 forming the histone octamer and the DNA wound around it making approximately 1.75 turns. In addition to that, the picture adjacent to that we see a small group marked X. That X is basically indicating where there were the epigenetic changes might be occurring within the histone molecule in order to alter the three dimensional topography of the DNA. Now, when we have a closer look into one histone octamer, we see that there are certain extensions which are present above the histone octamer. These are known as histone tails. These are nothing but the amino terminals of the histones which are made up of 24 to 40 amino acids which project beyond the surface of the nucleosome and the beyond the surface of the bases also. And these tails are also one important part wherein modifications can occur and that modifications can again alter the three dimensional topography of the DNA. Now, there is one more histone that is known as H1 histone. This histone is basically known as linker histone which basically is present as the DNA exits and enters the nucleosome model and it helps to maintain the tight coiling around it. Now, the chromatin structure is not uniform. There are certain regions where the chromatin is much more tightly packed known as the heterochromatin region whereas, there are certain regions where the chromatin is much more less lo or loosely packed which is known as the euchromatin region. The importance of this is in the heterochromatin regions since the DNA is very tightly packed it is inaccessible to any of the transcriptional machinery and therefore, the gene expression in those heterochromatin areas are very, very less whereas, in the gene expression in euchromatin regions are more because the DNA is tightly not tightly wound as a result of which it is much more accessible to the transcriptional machinery. Now, with this introduction, let us see what are the epigenetic changes, what are the basic changes that we see in epigenetics. Now, there are two basic epigenetic mechanisms, either I regulate the chromatin structure that is make it much more tightly coiled or much more loosely coiled and change the accessibility to the DNA by doing modifications that are there on the histone molecules or I do covalent modifications of DNA through a process known as DNA methylation. The other epigenetic mechanisms include non-coding RNAs and non-genic DNAs. Whatever be the histone modifications are, the basic alteration happens in the charge properties and the chemical bonds which makes the DNA much more loosely attached or tightly attached. Now, the different histone modifications include acetylations, phosphorylations, methylations, etcetera. There are a lot other modifications such as ubiquitylations, sumoylations, various different modifications are there. But for the discussion, we will see only three acetylation, methylations and and phosphorylation. Now, coming to the first important modification acetylation, this is basically adding of an acetyl group at lysine residue. Now, as we saw in the earlier slides that the lysine has positive charges, this positive charges interact with the negative charges of the DNA. So, if there is lysine residue, it neutralizes the positive charge. Now, if the positive charge is neutralized, the interaction between the positive charge of the lysine and the negative charge of the DNA phosphate backbone is no longer there as a result of which the DNA becomes loosely attached to the histone octamer and therefore, becomes much more accessible to the machinery. One more point that should be said here is, we saw the nucleosome model and we saw two different nucleosomes are located very close to each other. How are they located that close to each other? In that also, there is a role that is being played by the lysine and arginine molecules. It is said that the lysine and the arginine molecules form a positive patch that interacts with the surrounding nucleus 
bacteriosomes histone tails that forms a negative that forms a negative patch because of this attraction between the negative and the positive patch the two histones are or the two nucleosomes are located much more closer to each other so if there is any lysine modification it will destroy that patch itself also therefore the two nucleosomes that are located next to each other are not that closely attached to each other anymore so acetylation in this way changes the charge orientations thereby making either the dna much more loosely coiled around the chromatin nucleosome or the two nucleosomes are separated out from each other due to the change in charge properties the acetylation is brought about by the enzyme known as histone acetyl transferase or hats this histone acetyl transferase enzyme transfers the acetyl group from acetyl coa but this acetylation is a reversible process and it can be reversed by the enzyme histone deacetylase or hdacs now in the next picture let us have a look of how acetylation exactly brings about this change now in this picture we see a tightly compacted chromatin molecule or a nucleosome model in which each of the surrounding nucleosomes are very tightly attached to each other there is no space between them and as such the dna between them is not accessible to any transcriptional machinery but whenever there is an acetylation this acetylation destroys the positive charges on the lysine molecule and makes the dna much more open thereby increasing their accessibility to the transcriptional machinery and thereby making the genes expressed much more so this is how it increases the expression of those particular genes by transforming a tightly coiled form into a loose dna form next coming to the next important modification methylation methylation is basically nothing but a direct modification of cytosine molecules which are present on the dna or it could be methylations that are present on the histone molecules also but for the basic focus we will focus on what are the different modes of methylations that happens on the dna in dna methylations basically happens on cytosine residues catalyzed by the enzyme dna methyl transferase but not all cytosines are methylated only cytosines that are followed by guanines would be methylated this is the general rule of the thumb but that is not always true for all the cases sometimes solitary cytosines may also be modified but the basic idea is cytosines which are followed by guanines known as cpg dinucleotides are the ones that would be methylated there are two types of cpg dinucleotides either they are cpg dinucleotides are present in the form of repeating units in small clusters or they are present in large numbers forming what is known as cpg islands now basic cpg islands generally contain 500 to 1500 base pairs and they are located near or inside the promoters or they are located within genes the basic idea behind methylation is the cpg clusters which contains fewer number of cpgs or a lessly densely packed cpgs are hypermethylated and cpg islands are hemimethylated or less methylated this is the general rule of the thumb that is seen and one more factor to be kept in mind here is the cpg islands which are located near the promoters or located within the promoters are largely unmethylated that means there is no methylation that is present in the cpg islands which are present within the promoter regions what is the function of this methylation methylation of the dna causes suppression of gene transcription excessive methylation or extensive dna methylation triggers complete silencing of the gene how does it bring about the complete silencing of the gene methylation is said to recruit hdacs or histone deacetylase enzymes the function of this histone deacetylase enzymes is basically to remove the acetyl groups once the acetyl groups are removed on the the charges on the lysines are regained back and which were previously shielded are no longer shielded as a result of which the positive charges of the lysines now interact with the negatively charged uh, phosphate backbone of the dna making the interaction much more stronger and the dna is more tightly coiled around the 
histone octomer thereby limiting the accessibility to the transcriptional machinery. Now, effect of cytosine methylation also depends on the location. If the methylated site is located within the promoter region, then it will cause or might cause complete silencing of the genes and if the methylation sites are located within genes, it might cause a change in the transcriptional activity thereby increasing the transcriptional activity making the gene much more expressive. Next coming to the third most important modification known as phosphorylation. Phosphorylation of histones was first seen in H3 histones. Phosphorylation of histones is generally associated with an increase in gene expressivity or associated with gene activation. Now, coming to the two other modes of epigenetic modifications which are known as non-coding RNAs and non-genic DNA. In non-coding RNA, we have small RNAs which include miRNA or microRNA, small interfering RNA, siRNA and small nuclear RNA, snRNA. Whatever be the type of RNA, the basic mechanism that it employs is it promotes the formation of heterochromatin that is makes the DNA much more compacted or tightly wound or it promotes the degradation of mRNA or suppresses the expression of mRNA. So, that means either it makes the DNA less accessible if the mRNA has all already been synthesized by transcriptional activity, it stops the expression of that mRNA itself thereby decreasing the expression of that particular gene. The last mode was non-genic DNA. This is basically mediated by what are known as retrotransposons. Retrotransposons are nothing but jumping gene elements which are obtained or which are present in viruses. Now, whenever a virus or retrovirus infects a human being, then it inserts its own genome in within the human genome. Now, such insertions might cause the methylation of that particular gene where the retrotransposon was inserted and it might cause silent of that particular gene. So, these are the various epigenetic mechanisms that we see. Number one, either there is a change in the histone modification or there is a change in the DNA which can be brought about by methylation. Histone modifications can include acetylations and phosphorylations. If histones are not modified or DNA is not methylated, then epigenetic changes can be brought about by non-coding RNAs and non-genic DNA. What is the role of this epigenetics in health and disease? Is there any role of epigenetics in either health or disease? Now, in this regard, first we need to know what is basically the epigenetic changes that are happening. Now, generally patterns of DNA methylation in adult cells uh, parallels cell fate. That means, whatever would be the fate of the cell, that particular cell would have a different type of methylation. So, each adult cell having a different fate will have a different type of methylation pattern. Now, this methylation pattern is established only during embryogenesis. In the gametes or during fertilization, all of the methylations are removed and then re-established during embryogenesis. Now, what is the importance of this is? Methylated genes are genetically inactive and they are much more condensed. Is there any function of methylation in normal functioning? Now, we say that methylation silences. So, do we need silencing anywhere? Such examples are X chromosomal inactivation in females. Now, we know that females have two X chromosomes whereas, males have only one X chromosome. Now, in order to decrease the gene product uh, or to make the gene product same in males and females, one of the females in the somatic cells of females are inactivated and transformed into an bar body. That that transformation is brought about by extensive methylation of CPG islands on one X chromosome causing the complete silencing of that particular X chromosome causing the condensation of that X chromosome and appearing it as a bar body formation. Alteration of CPG methylations is also seen in aging and it is also seen in genomic imprinting. Now, what is genomic imprinting? There are certain genes which are expressed best based on their parental origin. There are certain genes in a child which are expressed only from the mother. There are certain genes which are only expressed from the father. So, what decides this that this particular gene from the mother would be expressed and this particular gene from the father would not be expressed that is again also brought about by methylation. So, these are some examples where methylation is used in normal functioning of the cells. 
cells. Methylation has also been implicated in certain disorders like cancer. Now, the general rule of methylation is or whatever is present in the healthy cells is the CPG which are present in the CPG islands are basically less methylated or hypomethylated, whereas CPGs which are present in small clusters or are less densely packed is hypermethylated. But this mechanism is exactly reversed in cancer cells where there is hypermethylation of CPG islands and hypomethylation of CPG clusters. Now, what do I or what is the mechanism that does it? We do not know maybe certain genomic insults or certain environmental conditions, but the effect of this change or alteration or reversal of methylation is global hypomethylation of DNA might cause genomic instability or chromosomal instability and it might cause activation of proto-oncogenes. And then the hypermethylations of CPGs in CPG islands which are located near the promoters might inactivate a tumor suppressor gene. Both events are necessary to form a tumorous growth that is inactivation of a tumor suppressor gene and an activation of a proto oncogene which both can be achieved by altering the methylations that are present in the normal cells in their transformation to a cancerous cell. Next, we come to the age old question of genetics versus nature versus nurture. Now, in the beginning we thought genetics is the one that decides who we are, but that thought does not hold true now. Now, we know that there are lot many factors in an environment and in our the way we lead our lifestyle all of it brings about an effect on our final characteristics, final outcome, final expression of characteristics. So, what is that changes the expressivity of a particular gene. Now, this expression or this change or this thought of nature versus nurture was very expressed from a Dutch famine study which said that Germans blocked food to the Dutch in the winters of 1944. The calorie consumption for approximately 4.5 million people came down from 2000 calories to 500 calories per day. So, basically they did not have any food to eat. Now, the children that were born during this time of famine were short in stature. They had a lot of diseases including edema, anemia, diabetes and depression. But after this famine was over, 30 to 40 years after the famine was over, it was still seen that the women that were surviving during this period of famine, whenever they had their children, their children also expressed the same kind of disorders like short stature, diabetes, anemia and all other characteristics. So, this proved that there is certain changes that are being inherited from that time to this time. So, that food depreciation has caused certain changes in the DNA which are being heritable now and the children that are developing in this period where they are having a normal diet, they are still having those deficiency manifestations that were seen during the period of the famine. This comes to the age old concept that does nutrition and physical activity, nature and nurture has any effect on the expression. Now, we know that DNA methylation will regulate gene expression either by hyper or hypomethylation. If there is hypermethylation, there is silencing. If there is hypomethylation, there is increased expression. Now, the food stuffs and the physical activity that we do, all of which are capable of acting, uh, affecting the DNA methylation. For example, the folic acid that we take in our food, the selenium that is present there in the food, if a person consumes green tea, all of which has an effect on DNA methylation. In addition to that, physical activity, stress, aging also has an effect on DNA methylation. In addition to that, certain carcinogenic substances like tobacco smoke, environmental pollutants also have an effect on DNA methylation. Now, we say that the maternal health during pregnancy also has an impact on the growth of the child. How is it so? The intra uterine environment that the child is exposed to also has an effect on DNA methylation. Now, let us see how the food that we consume, the polyphenols from the different foods, selenium and physical activity, they are capable of causing covalent modification of histones that might cause relaxation and compactation of chromatin which alters their transcriptional activity. If there is changes in the physical activity or there is cigarette smoking or there is changes in the intrauterine environment that is maternal alcohol or smoking that also regulates the gene expression by regulating miRNA or microRNA expression that might cause 
any changes in the transcriptional activity by either degrading the mRNA transcript or repressing the expression of the mRNA transcript. Thus, we see the external environment, the diet we take, the physical activity that we do, the stress that we take in also has an effect on expression of the genes by epigenetic mechanisms. So, epigenetics also plays a major role in determining the expression of genes based on nature and nurture. Thank you.